and we're recording here as well. Hello, everyone. Welcome to Outstanding Balance, episode 11 with Dr. Bruce Baird. Today, we're talking about planning for your practice for 2021. Who would have thought what happened in 2020 did happen? Practices were shut down for the first time in my lifetime, Dr. Baird, I think your lifetime as well. I mean, so we've seen some, some wild and interesting things. So let's see if we can maybe use some of your knowledge to set our best foot forward so we can play a better hand in uh, 2021. Yeah, I like I like that uh, that way of thinking, Stephen. It's uh, this has been it has been a challenging year. However, those that that had a great plan and those who were really looking, um, you know, looking ahead and understood their business, you know, we we've seen some amazing recoveries too out of practices that were really hurt. But it's something that I've done every December for the last uh, thirty five years. And uh, what I'm talking about is pre-planning for next year. Uh, and, and, you know, we talk about at Productive Dentist Academy, we talk a lot about production per hour, but, you know, and some don't. But what I, what I would like to, to share with you is go back and look at this year, you know, uh, and look at last year also. Don't just look at the COVID year, but also look at last year and run your numbers, you know, what was your personal production and collection? What was your, how many hours did you work? And make that divide and figure out what is your production per hour? It breaks it down to something that's very simple, but it helps you set goals for next year. The other thing that I do every year is I run a production by procedure report. For last year, I would do it, and for this year. Uh, again, I would probably average them uh, because uh, of this kind of unique situation that we went through with COVID. Uh, why am I looking at these procedures? Well, I looked at I look at this every single year for since we've had computers. And let's just say we were averaging 38 crowns a month. Uh, or whatever it is, 38 crowns a month. And that was year before last. And this year we averaged 12 a month. You know, my question would be besides COVID, what, why, why were we down to 12 a month? Does it have anything to do with our marketing? Does it have anything to do with, uh, you know, my case presentation skills? Does it have anybody, anything to do with my team that's working and doing the presentations? Because I, I look for growth every single year. And one of the things that, that I would find, and crowns usually, the more crowns, more onlays, more inlays, more dentures, more uh, extractions. Uh, but you start looking at things like uh, grafting, you know, uh, socket grafting. You know, one year you do 100 and, you know, you're, you do 100 and the next year you do 40. Why is that? What's the difference between 140? Usually it, it, it gets out of my mind. I don't treatment plan for it. Meaning I, I, I might say, you know, my team gives me a, a, an indicator. When I say tooth number four, six, eight, 12, 15 need uh, SE extraction, they usually will respond to me to help us in our diagnosis. Uh, Dr. Baird, does that need uh, grafting? And I'll go, absolutely. Mary, let me explain to you what, what we're talking about with grafting. You know, we, we put, uh, we, we actually draw your blood and we spin it and we create your own super cells. And we put that in that place where your tooth was and new bone will grow back very quickly. You don't have to do it, but if we don't, we know you're going to lose 70% of the width and 40% of the height of that bone, and it'd make it much more difficult to wear a denture, a partial, uh, an implant, perhaps. And so when I do that, what happens is uh, the patient says yes or no, it doesn't matter. But if we forget to do that one thing, and if my team forgets to do that one thing, then all of a sudden we're not doing as many. Well, what, what does that mean? Well, the difference in 60 graphs, that means 40 grand. You know, indirect pulp caps, uh, pulp caps. Um, you know, you can go down through your list, but what you have to do first 
is put your numbers and you can write them all down on an Excel spreadsheet if you want to. These are the procedures I'm looking at. This was 2000. This was, I mean, this was 2018. This was 2019. And look at trends. Those trends are going to make the difference between massive success and growth of your business and not having growth of your business. The other thing that I do is I want to figure out every, I want to figure my schedule for next year. One of the things that I would do is, you know, and, and, and I say the old days, um, 25 years ago, I would just schedule and then I would say, okay, uh, I want to go to this meeting. And I would say that in the last, uh, a week before or two weeks before. Well, you can't do that when you're running a, a, a business you really don't want to do that. So I try to plan my year. Yes, I want to go to the American Academy of Implant Dentistry meeting in so-and-so. I want to go to this meeting. I want to go out and see uh, John Coyce, you know, for this program. I look at all the dates of the dates that I'm going to be gone. I also look at my vacation times. Where do I want to go? Where, what places do I want to be? You know, okay, we're going to go to we're going to go to California for two weeks, or we're going to go to, to Italy. We're going to go do this. So I, I go ahead and set my schedule. Why do I do that? I do that because I'm going to begin the process of setting up my hourly production. Now, when I say hourly production, you're going to look at how many hours do you work a month? The average dentist is working about 128 hours a month. That's a that's a four day work week. Uh, if you're working a four and a half, you're going to be a little bit more than that. Um, if you're working five, it's going to be more than that. But what I want you to do is I want you to commit to making a certain amount every single month. And when I say that commit, I mean, commit. So what I would commit to in our practice is I would do 125,000 a month in production. That was my goal. That would be my, that'd be my drop, drop bottom line number. Why? Because I'm running a business and I want to know that I'm committed to bringing in 125,000 bucks. What if it's 50? Fine. It doesn't matter. It's just, you know, when you sit back and this could be a five day seminar, but you look at what your profitability incentive coin is, what is it going to cost you to run your business and pay yourself? Uh, th these are the important things to know. So if, if that number happens to be 170, well, I look at how much is hygiene going to contribute to that and what is their goal going to be? And so what I'm doing is I'm predictably predicting what I'm going to do at the end of the, by the end of the year. Now, what happens if, uh, let's just say, instead of working 128 hours one month, I'm going to be on vacation. And being on vacation is going to allow me to uh, only work 64 hours or 80 hours. Guess what I do at that time? What I'm going to do at that time is I am going to uh, start to preload. I'm going to start to preload my schedule. So let's just say that's in July, March, or no, I'm sorry, April, May, maybe a little bit in June. When I see a patient that has more treatment, a lot of treatment, I'm going to preload my schedule because I know my production per hour is going to have to be twice what it would have been. So instead of my production per hour being 500 an hour, it needs to be a thousand an hour. And all of us have done high amounts of production per hour and low. It just depends month by month. I don't do that. My production per hour is consistent. It stays uh, extremely consistent. Uh, at, at with growth of about six, 7%. So every year you would see me doing more and more production. Why? Because I evaluated my business even more and more. So when I, when I share that with you, what was funny is Jeff Booski, my partner, when he first started 15 years ago with me, you know, we would do this planning in December and we would look at, okay, this is where we were this past year. We did you know, in our practice, we did 4,800,000 with two of us. So we're highly productive. Now, what are we going to do next year? Well, let's figure it out. Well, we'd like to see 8% growth. Well, what does that actually equate to? Well, we look at it. Everybody gets an 8% growth target. And now we become committed to that new target. 
So as you're looking at next year, we know that, you know, we know I'm just sitting here this morning watching the first, uh, the COVID uh, shot given, you know, for, you know, for the, uh, the antibodies. Awesome, you know, and that gives us hope and that's why the market's up this morning. So these are all great things, but even if we have trouble, it doesn't matter because you're gonna be committed to this new way of thinking, this new thought process, okay? Um, so as, as I look at each year, I'm always, I'm always doing this. And by looking at previous production by procedure reports, by looking at my schedule ahead of time, does that mean that I find out there's going to be a course in September and I was going to be working 128 hours? Although for me, I worked uh, 64 hours for 15 years. I worked two days a week, but my production was at a super high level. So it doesn't matter if your production is the average dentist is 425 an hour or whether it's uh, like our grand slammers with productive dentists or doctors that use compassionate finance a lot. Their production per hour might be 2,500, 2,000, 1,500 per hour. Why? Because they're able to give options for people to do the dentistry that they need and let them pay it over time. So th these are all things that we look at. Um, and I think, you know, it, it's just super important to plan. Those who don't plan, you end up getting wherever it is you were going to go. And there's really no, no predictive analytics that you can use, or you're not using predictive analytics. And I've done the podcast on the Productive Dentist podcast I do every week. I, I've talked about predictive analytics. I've talked about all of these things. So if you, if you haven't heard, heard of them, you can also, besides the YouTube channel, you can also go to Productive Dentist uh, podcast because I've got, oh gosh, I think 80, uh, oh, 90, 90, I think, podcasts of 15 minutes each. 15 minutes is, the reason we do 15 minutes is because that's the um, only amount of time I can concentrate. I can concentrate for about 15 minutes and then I'm on to something else. Um, so, so, you know, if you have any questions, please let me know. But these are the things that we do year in and year out. And it helps for predictable growth. It helps for a predictable business environment that you're in. And these are the things that, uh, that I, I love doing. Because what, what does understanding, once you reach it one year and once you reach it the next year, what you're going to find is it reduces stress. Why? Because you know you're going to reach the goals that you've set. Now, marketing plays a role. There's lots of things that play a role here, but uh, those are all things we're going to talk about on on future uh, on future webinars. So, uh, Stephen, have we had any any questions? Anybody have any questions or? No questions have run through yet. Again, if you want to hit that Q and A tab at the bottom of the Zoom module, you can type it in there, or you can go ahead and type it in the chat box, and we'll get that answered. Now, I have a question for you, Doctor Baird. I was wondering, do uh, did you ever perform like maybe an audit of some of the services and tools that were you were using throughout the year, and maybe say like, hey, you know what, this one I thought this would be a winner, but we're not using it, so I'm going to go ahead and put it aside. Or this one, I still believe in it. I need to integrate it better into my teams you know, daily procedures to make sure they're asking for something like compassionate finance or, you know, using a Bella the right way. Right. Yeah. The, the thing is, I'm constantly evaluating numbers, you know, in the practice. When I say constantly, oh, that means uh, five minutes a day because that's all I really need. I, I can look at the numbers and I can say each day I'm looking at those numbers and I know uh, predictably how much how much compassionate finance do we do? How is Abella working? Are we talking to patients about compassionate finance? Is it part of our, uh, is it part of our, uh, you know, treatment presentation? Uh, I don't offer it until people say, "Do you have payment options?" Yeah, no. There's, a, I'd rather say here's three percent cash discount. But if they say, "Do you have payment options?" Then that's when we'll we'll offer that, and we do audit. You know, when I look at different employees, you'll have two of them that offer it all the time. And then you have one that just hardly ever says anything about it. And you can easily look at that by based on where those cases are coming from. And so then I'll have conversation in our team meetings that says, remember, guys, this is part of our part of our uh, case presentation. And so, yeah, we do. We do that all the time. And it makes a huge difference uh, day to day. Yeah. Kind of keeping things top of mind always, you know. It helps the team remember to ask them and helps them, you know, create a good 
a, a good kind of on-ramp for the new folks who join your team during the year. Maybe you haven't been able to coach them on every last little thing you offer, but if it just becomes part of the culture, then. Hey, yeah, you'll have different, you know, different employees and, and things change. Now, one of the things that I loved being a dentist was that I had one assistant or one treatment coordinator for 10 years, one for 20 years and one for 30. So I tried that, uh, the longevity and the longer you get to practice that by taking great care of your team, uh, those, those issues become part of their DNA. It becomes part of their physiologic, what they do. It's how do we do things? And this is the way we do things. And, and, uh, and, and, and it's not learned overnight. Uh, and sometimes if you've been doing something for 20 years, you forget, just like me. I would have Summer say, you're not going over risk factors with the patients. I said, sure, I do. I do that every time I do a consultation. She goes, no, you're not. And I have to look at myself and say, hmm, well, maybe I'm not. I mean, let me think back. Uh, and, and then we would see that kind of, uh, that kind of situation. Um, do you find that most dentists don't use their reports and their software to see their procedure productivity? That's a question we just had and, and ab absolutely. Uh, in fact, well, I don't know what the percentage is, but I just know that most dentists aren't being as proactive as they could be, or there's no way they would be doing 425 on an hour average. Because uh, $425 an hour average, you could take two hours to do a crown prep, you know, every day uh, and do four crown preps a day and you'd be at the national average. And so what I think is you look at the little things and I always tell people this uh, in our seminars and, and everything we do, I say, you know, there is no silver bullet, although I do have one um, that was given to me as a gift because I'm always saying there's no silver bullet. And he said, now you have, now you have one. But there's no one procedure you're going to do that's going to just blow your practice up and make it great. It's all the little things that you do. It's, it's do we know when every patient walks in, do they need a pano? Has it been three to five years? You know, is it, uh, are, we, are we asking if they need extract, uh, you know, with grafting with extractions? Do they have, uh, you know, are we even, you know, there, there's so much crown lengthening. Why is it fair for one patient to pay a thousand dollars for a crown that's super gingival and someone else to pay a thousand dollars for a crown that's sub gingival and sub crustal? It, it, it's not, although most of the time we end up doing that. But going back and looking at your production by procedure reports gives you aha moments. Might only be if you go through all of them and you compare you may have five or 10 aha moments. I mean, literally, and, and five or 10 aha moments can mean a hundred grand a year. It could mean 150 grand a year. Uh, and when you measure out how many hours you worked that year, that could be an additional hundred an hour, 150, 200 an hour. So that, that's what I look at. And yeah, most dentists aren't looking at their software and most dentists are, you know, really aren't looking at their business. Truthfully, um, PDA, we, we worked with, thousands of practices, we've only had, I think it's six uh, that ever ran their business on a budget that had budget to actual numbers. And so these are the things that we teach at Productive Dentist. They're also the things that we recommend uh, at Compassionate Finance and at CFI. We, you know, we know that the more you can automate things, the better it is. <laughs> you know, the more you can take it, you know, not out of human control, but have it where people, this just becomes, again, part of their DNA, then we know that you're going to be extremely successful with that. Yeah, that's great. That even that last little bit of automation just made me think of a bell. I don't know if you saw this great video testimonial that Dr. Um, Dr. Uh, Nacho did for us last week, but just talked about, yeah. I invested $700 and I got back nearly 14,000. Here's how to do it. Uh, it was, it, it was great. He interviewed his, uh, his office manager, he said, Kate, aren't all my ideas good? She said, no, <laughs> it was a good well, one. You know, the thing, the thing about being a good leader, you know, you, you listen, you learn, you have great ideas yourself, you hear great ideas, you implement, and then you reevaluate. You reevaluate and you find out, okay, this isn't working the way it should. Now I have two, two, two reasons. One is we're just not doing it the right way or 
it's just wasn't that good of an idea. And I thought it was, you know, and so, but you got to be a good leader is one that says, you know what, let's, uh, let's step back on this one idea and let's go to this next. So it's, it's extremely important uh, from my perspective to be introspective, look at yourself, look at your practice, look at your numbers and, and be predictive about where you want to be at the end of next year. And that's one of the things we do at the foundations course at PDA. We're doing it. It's all online. You can go to uh, productivedentist.com and you can see the foundations course. I think we're starting one in January, but by the end of that, you end up with a two-year plan. Uh, you learn a lot more about the intricacies of what we're talking about. So uh, we certainly would welcome you there also. So. Yeah, that's excellent. Well, we don't have any more questions today. We did have somebody mention the podcast. So yes, Dr. Bear does have a podcast. I will send it in the link follow-up. Go ahead and subscribe. To it. it usually comes out every Monday. And like he said, he's got about 89 episodes in there right now. Just fantastic stuff. A real easy listen. And, um, you know, just make it a weekly habit and you will learn you will learn quite a bit from it. I will also include some links to Productive Dentist Academy so you can sign up. They usually have a good discount code for some of their courses as well. So please do take advantage of that. And of course, take advantage of the free trial of Compassionate Finance, the free trial of Abella. We will not charge you a dime until 2021. So it's really a great time to get your team trained right before the holiday, get everything ready to go, and we can have you up and running, ready to go. So January 1st comes you can do some of those things like a bell and press that button and see if you can get 13 grand back in two weeks or, yeah. um, you know, compassion and finance, start offering some of those payment plans for folks who might not be able to afford your dentistry. Otherwise, yeah, so our practice, that, yeah. our practice collected 77,000 in 28 days. That tells you, I thought we had great accounts receivable, but a lot of over 90 was sitting there on the books. We never turned it over a collection agency because that never works. And we just literally started using Abella and bingo and ended up with 77 grand. That was like Christmas, Christmas yeah. in Christmas in August, whenever I did it, I can't remember, but it was great. Patients are usually never too far away from these as, as most of us are not. So getting, That's getting right. that message and that little call to action does uh, help them make those payments really quickly. So right, thank guys. you so much for your time, Dr. Baird. You know, tomorrow, uh, next Monday, we'll come back. We'll have maybe a little bit more of a wrap up for 2021. Maybe we can make some recommendations of like a course or some sort of education that we could put Absolutely. on our webinars, uh, maybe a show even, and and just maybe let them know some of the places you'll be you'll be in 2021 if they like Sounds to Sounds good. Sounds good. Thank you, guys. I appreciate your time this morning. Have a great Thanks, day. Everybody.